In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple thinkorswim skin that lets you find opportunities like this one inside of Abvi. Opportunities in which the market stage for a particular stock is changing and reversing. If you can time some of these early market trend switches, I think those are some of the best opportunities in which you have little heat for a lot of upside to be able to ride the wave for as long as possible. In today's video, we're going to be building scans for the Market Pulse Indicator. By the end of this video, you'll understand how this Market Pulse line works, what causes us to change different market stages and the colors you see on our charts, and how you can scan for them to very quickly identify shifts like this one inside of AbbVie. Now first, I think it's helpful to understand what's going on behind the scenes, and if you're unfamiliar with our Market Pulse Indicator or the Market Pulse Stages, Here's a quick uh, recap. The Market Pulse Indicator tracks four major market stages. That's acceleration, which is when the Market Pulse is green, and this is where we're looking for the market to accelerate upwards. Accumulation, which is yellow, and here the Market Pulse is building strength. This is telling you that we're looking for the market to transition to green, but it hasn't yet. Then we have deceleration, which is the opposite of acceleration, telling you the market pulse is indicating a downward market trajectory. And then finally, you have distribution, which similar to accumulation is a little bit more chop, however, with more of a bearish bias. That's a quick high level overview. And with these four market stages, which again, very easy to see, I'll show you in just a second on your charts, it becomes very easy to objectively determine trend every single time both trend along with where you're looking for pullbacks. And that's the beauty of the Market Pulse Indicator. I think it's a great alternative to moving averages. It's much cleaner and it's nicer looking on your charts. It also helps you avoid analysis paralysis. Now we have the first market stage, which is our market stage of acceleration. That's again, sharp directional movement to the upside. This is what we're looking for. If we come back to a chart of Advi, we transition to that market stage of acceleration when we see this first green on our chart. That's the market pulse line telling you that we're now transitioning from this market stage of deceleration, which went from deceleration to distribution to accumulation to now acceleration when the market pulse went green. So very clear to see how these market stages are transitioning. We go from red to gray to green and the label tells you very clearly what market stage you're in. So the first stage, acceleration, very easy to read it with the green line on the chart along with the label telling you acceleration. Now this is where things get a little bit important from the scan perspective. Via code, the stage acceleration is defined with two different conditions. The first condition is all of our volume weighted moving averages must be stacked bullishly. And you'll understand how many and which ones there are when we write the scan. But just know for the condition, all of these need to be stacked bullishly for us to see this acceleration stage. And the second condition is our closing price of the current candle must be greater than the variable moving average. We use a 10 period variable moving average. And that's what plots this line that you see on the chart. The actual location of the line is determined by that 10 period VMA line, the variable moving average. So acceleration, very easy to see, but now you understand how to define it via code. Now we repeat this for accumulation as well, and I'll spare you the description. I think more, most of that is uh, straightforward. Accumulations where price is consolidating. We're looking for more pullbacks during this for a resumption of that acceleration trend. If the market pulse line is gray and we see accumulation, then that tells you that we're looking for some sort of a buildup here inside of price action. Really nice consolidation period. Now via code, for this condition to be true, we need to see that the variable moving averages are not stacked bullishly. This is the big difference between accumulation versus acceleration. In acceleration, our volume weighted moving averages were stacked bullishly, and in the stage of accumulation, we've lost that bit of bias. So that's the key difference between the two stages. You'll see the second condition is the same, that we must be above that 10 period variable moving average line. So now you're hopefully starting to understand the difference between acceleration and accumulation. The way we determine strength 
is if we have our volume weighted moving averages stacked bullishly, and that helps us account for both volume along with price action. Now we inverse this for deceleration. So this should hopefully be clicking at this point. Deceleration, bearish trend, looking for momentum in that direction. We see a market pulse label tell us very clearly that we're in the stage of deceleration. We can also see the market pulse line telling us very clearly with it printing red. Now from a code perspective, this is the exact opposite of accumu or acceleration. Excuse me. All of our volume weighted moving averages must be stacked bearishly and our closing price must be below the variable moving average. And you can of course guess what distribution is. Distribution is nearly the same thing, except we are not stacked bearishly on our volume weighted moving averages. Now that we understand those four nuances, let's jump into the code so we can start building these scans. Now inside of Thinkorswim, I'm going to start by first opening up our Market Pulse Indicators code. If you don't already have this indicator, I'll leave a link to download it in the description box below. And I also have these scans uploaded to the Market Pulse Downloads folder. Now, if we take a look at the code, I want to give you a quick overview. The first section of the code all the way up to where we see this plot VMA line is doing exactly that. It's calculating the variable moving average. Now, this is what determines the line on our chart. And we have this set to the 10 period variable moving average. Now, if we come down the next portion of our code, you'll notice uh, defines volume weighted moving averages. And we have the 8, the 21 and the 34. These three must all be stacked bullishly in order for us to see that acceleration condition. You'll see here, acceleration must be when bullish and close is greater than or equal to VMA. Bullish is when we have all of them stacked bearish, uh, bullishly. VMA is the line, so when close is above it, we see all of our conditions being met, and that's when we have our market stage of acceleration. Now, if we take a look at the add label code, this will give us really the clues of how the four market stages are defined. The first stage, acceleration, is defined if we have bullish and close is greater than or equal to VMA. Deceleration is when we have the opposite, bearish and price is less than that. So if we were to use the code piece of that, we should be able to build a scan which allows us to scan between different market stages. So I'm going to start by copying all of our market pulse indicators code. Coming inside of our scan tab here, I'm going to leave just our two uh, liquidity filters. I'll click Add Filter and now click Study. Inside of the dropdown, I'll select Custom and bring this down to the middle. Navigate to ThingScript Editor. Here, I'm going to paste all of the Market Pulse code that we just copied. Now, you'll notice we have some errors like our Add Label is not uh, allowed in this context. No problem, we'll take care of that. I'm going to comment out the Add Label code for right now, which is on line 32. Now the rest of our code compiles. However, if you were to just run the scan, it wouldn't give you anything useful. We need to change our plot VMA from a plot variable to a def variable. We're no longer scanning for the market pulse line. Instead, we're scanning for actual market pulse stage shifts. Now the way we can do that is by coming in here and saying something like plot signal is equal to, and now we can define our condition. So let's say the first thing we want to scan for is when we're transitioning into the stage of acceleration and on our previous bar, we have not been in this stage of acceleration. So the way we could very easily do this is by saying something like this. If we have bullish and close is equal to our VMA, and let me remove this asterisk, that was a typo. So if that condition is true on the current bar and we don't have this condition true on the previous bar where we're going to check if we were not bullish on the previous bar and our previous bar's close price was not greater than or equal to our variable moving average, then go ahead and return true. Now let's go ahead and run this scan and let's see what we're left with. And in fact, I'm going to make this a little smaller just so we don't it didn't take that long, actually. OK, so off of our daily time frame, if we were to come into a chart of ServiceNow, so I'm going to come to ServiceNow, daily time frame, 
what we should see is a market pulse that's transitioning to green and has not been green on the previous bar, aka our market pulse is transitioning to this market stage of acceleration. Let's test this with a few other stocks on this list. Let's take a look at IBM next. If I come into IBM, we'll see the same thing here. IBM transitioning, we were previously in this market stage of red. Now we went from red to gray, and now we're seeing us transition to this market stage of green, aka acceleration. So very easy for us to now find stocks that are transitioning from a bearish or previously bearish market pulse stage and transitioning now to a bullish market pulse stage of acceleration. So this was, let's say, acceleration. So transitioning to market stage of acceleration. Now what happens if we want to find the opposite? Maybe we want to find where we're transitioning to a market stage of deceleration. How would we go about doing that? Now I'm going to comment out this line of code, which was our bullish scan, and I'm going to repeat this now for our bearish scan. You can only have one plot variable, which is why you need to comment them out one or the other. Now for our bearish side, we can simply say bearish and close is less than or equal to VMA. And on our previous bar or the condition that we're checking for the previous one is we don't want this to be true. The same exact thing except we're now checking on the previous bar to make sure that on the previous bar, we did not have this market stage of deceleration. As long as that's true, then this condition, the signal variable will return true, and we should find all of the stocks transitioning to this market stage of deceleration. So let's trust, or let's test that, excuse me, with FLR. So I'm going to come into FLR here, now, FLR is a little bit interesting. Our previous bar was not a market stage of deceleration, and we're now transitioning to that market stage of deceleration. So it still very much meets our rules. Next, we could check AEP. AEP, transitioning from green to red, to uh, continuing to go to red here. So we're seeing this trend continuation going from a previous bar, which did not have the market stage of deceleration, our previous bar, was above our variable moving average, and now our current bar is closing below it. So we can find both trend continuation along with trend reversals with this one very simple scan. So that's how you scan for the market pulse indicator and market stage shifts. It's very simple. These two lines should help you find both the bullish and the bearish market pulse stages, and I think it gives you a really nice watch list to find stocks exactly like this one, we had Abby earlier today, which intraday here had a really nice market pulse switch. You can use the same scan from the daily time frame to instead something like the five minute time frame, repeat this, and now you can find stocks in which the market pulse is transitioning on an intraday time frame. So if we were to say, take a look at UBS here, UBS, five minute time frame chart. And we can see our market pulse went from gray to red, aka the scan is now returning true. In case you wanted to avoid trend rever or trend continuations, you could change the second condition up to also avoid things like looking for previous market pulse stages of deceleration within the past, say, X bars, and that would help you avoid some of these trend continuation candidates as well. I hope you found this video helpful for those of you looking to understand how to build scans for the Market Pulse Indicator. I've uploaded the two Market Pulse scans that we created, the bullish and the bearish Market Pulse scans, to our Market Pulse downloads, and the link for downloading the scans along with the indicator is available in the description box below. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading. I hope you found the Market Pulse Indicator to be useful. I find it to be a really nice alternative to moving averages, exponential and simple moving averages. It's much cleaner, it's simpler, and it's way easier to work with, giving you the key pieces of information you need when you need them. Take care, and I'll see you in our next update.